excited about his presence. We love you, JB. We really do. And Pisces rule, of course. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your Piscean presenter, aka creative, kind, smart, and just totally awesome. At your phones, epicenter. Yeah, we are in the home stretch of season two right now. We are so close to the big season finale taking place this Sunday. You're all that matters to me. You and that prize, of course. So let's see what we're working with right now. Never say never, because look at that. It now stands at $122,925. Enough to excite even Bieber himself right there, guaranteed. Now remember, you've only got two more days to level up. For every point earned by players, the prize will get bigger and bigger until the season finale. Stay tuned to find out just how high that prize is going to go. Here's how you win points by answering questions right, of course, and sharing to social from the HQ app. Those points help you reach levels. Leveling up gives you free passes. A free pass keeps you in the game. Even when you get a question wrong, the higher your level, the more free passes you have. Level 10 is the highest. That is superstar status. VIP, baby, that's what I'm talking about. If you hit level 10, that means you only have to answer a few questions right to win HQ for the remainder of the season. Indeed. Now, tonight you're playing for $2,500. Baby, 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 oh. Plus, for each point you earn this evening, we're going to multiply and get this by 25. That's an HQ record right there times 25 that's sure to help you level up in the game if it doesn't i don't know what well extra lives are totally awesome and can keep you from falling off the stage tonight you can buy one right now if you see it on your screen when you use an extra life you can still play when you get a question wrong if you play hq five days in a row you will score one for free you can use it on any round aside from the final one so no round 12s with those extra lives now monday as you know, it's Movie Monday. Watch out for the icebergs, everyone, because we're bringing you Titanic trivia. Are you the king of the world or the queen? We'll find out Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's gonna be a good one, my favorite movie. Okay, it ain't about the complications. It's all about the elevation. It's time to elevate. So let's get to the quizzing, shall we? Here we go with Q1. What film character is known for stomping on buildings? Vito Corleone, Godzilla, Daisy Worthen. Gotta have a particular type of foot to do that kind of stomping. It's not very polite to stomp on buildings. Miss Daisy had way more manners than that. A monster of an answer. Godzilla, of course. Yeah, Godzilla loves to trample cities and buildings. 304,000 of you are stomping on yourselves. Among the landmarks the Japanese beast has stepped on, we've got the Golden Gate Bridge, Madison Square Garden, and Sydney Opera House. He likes the big boys, Godzilla does. Okay, if you want to make the most of your game tonight, check out those point multipliers on your screen right now. They can help you maximize your score. Can you make it to level 10 by Sunday? Only one if you have so far. I want to see some more level 10ers in the game. There's a lot of cash at stake. Here's Q2. Which of these is German food? Tikka masala, bratwurst, Kung Pao chicken. A mix of all three of these would be quite delicious, I'm sure kind of hungry myself. I love my salmon tikka masala with naan bread, but it's not very German. The makings of a German sausage fest. It's bratwurst. If you had a bratwurst before, this is going to be your best right here. 307,000 of you. Well done. Bratwurst is German for roast sausage and puts our hot dogs in their mystery meat. To shame. Q3, which of these is a common word in music theory, octopodes, octave, octillion? Not very common words just in life. If you went for octopodes, you hit the wrong note here, I'm afraid. Is that even a word? With several meanings in the world of music, octave is the answer that we were looking for here. You're hitting those high notes, me, 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 me. 300,000 of you are, and you're moving on. Octave can mean a stanza of eight lines, a musical interval embracing eight diatonic degrees, or a bunch of other stuff related to eights. Q4. Which of these is currently the name of a sovereign nation? Zanzibar, Czechoslovakia, Bhutan. 
keeping it independent, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going solo? Czechoslovakia was right 26 years ago, but it doesn't even exist today. If you work for this landlocked nation, you've got it on lock, all right? Bhutan is the answer that we were looking for. Oh my God, that was a savage question if ever I saw one. 200,000 of you have gone here at Q4. 103,380 of you are moving on. Well done to you guys for making it through that one. Bhutan is an extremely peaceful nation. In fact, they invented the concept of GDH, gross domestic happiness, although I'm sure you prefer the profit. Q5, which animal carries its young in a pouch? Koala, bush baby, platypus. It's a hands-free society. Pouch comes in pretty handy. You won't find any of these exotic animals where I live in New York. They prefer more laid back lifestyle, keeping their family close to the bell. It's the koala, cute and cuddly. Look at them right there, they're so lovable. The koala is the correct answer. 193,000 of you bearing with me. That was a brutal question. 100,000 of you gone here. Now us humans are inspired by marsupials. We don't have pouches, but baby carriers are just as handy. Q6. Every complete sentence contains a subject and what else? Gerund, predicate, object. Yeah, two things, subject and what. What's the other one? Some of us did not learn this lesson in school. Forget Yeezy, NWA taught me. Blame it on Ice Cube because the setting get funky when you got a subject and a predicate. Yeah, Dr. Dre knows. And Ice Cube and the rest of them. Predicate is the answer we were looking for. 183,000 of you grammar nerds got that right. The subject of a sentence tells you who or what it's about. The predicate gives you more info about them. E.g. you, the subject, know your predicates. The predicates. Simple, right? Q7 halfway. According to the US flag code, the American flag should not be what? Carried flat, burned, displayed upside down. Don't break the code. Wouldn't be good for any of us. You can hang the flag upside down, but you'd better be in distress if you do. This symbol of freedom must always be aloft and free and flowing, so don't carry it flat. That is a big no-no for sure. Oh my, I have never seen such a savage in my entire life. 260,000 of you are gone right now. Just 22,725 of you are still flying your flags high. Hope you all have extra lives at the ready there. That was painful to watch. Now, if you thought burning the flag, which a lot of you did, was a big no-no, you're wrong. It's considered the most dignified way to retire old ones. Not people, but flags. Whoa. That was crazy. Q8, what information is not on either Voyager Golden Record launched into space for aliens to find? Nuclear fission, Earth's location, DNA. These records were blasted into space. NASA sent a mixtape of music and info into space hoping to teach aliens about Earth. Keeping things peaceful, they omitted the nuclear fission. And you're fishing for a win tonight, 73,966 of you. Good, a lot of you had extra lives there. All right, now, you are not supposed to give your address to strangers, but NASA did. Guess the aliens didn't like our jams enough to visit, though. They passed on that. Q9, which animal appears on the game spinner packaged with classic versions of Hi-Ho Cherio, horse, dog, cat? Hi-Ho, it's off to work, you go. The spinner featured a couple of animal characters. Remember that thieving bird? There was no cat to chase him away. This was rough. It was a dog, as you see right there. Woof, woof. Yeah, it was the, the little doggy that was on that spinner. 36,246 of you spinning around. The game has been going strong since 1960. It's a great way to learn to count to 10, at least. And here we are. A Q term, what a coincidence. The ESPY Award for Best Male Athlete has most often gone to players of which sport? Football, basketball, golf. Which one dominates this category? 
These athletes have all the luck, their sport pays the most on average, and they're scoring all the SBs. Here they are, it's basketball. Basketball is the winning sport there, 28,219 of you dribbling forward. Although basketball in general has scored the slam dunk here. Golfer Tiger Woods has won the award the most. Five holes in one. Now don't forget players, HQ Words, coming up next. After trivia, you know the drill, happening at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Keep your phones close, HQTs. Q11, the easternmost and westernmost points of all US territory are both named for members of what family? Udall, Gadsden, Breckenridge. Keeping it in the fam, in the blood. If you went for Breckenridge, your chances of a win are broken, I'm afraid. Making their mark from east to west, the Udall family. That's who we're looking for. Powerful family, 14,581 of you. You did it. Now, a peninsula in Guam is the westernmost point, while all the way east, you hit St. Croix. Both are named for Congressman Brothers Mo and Stuart Udall. We're heading north right now. We're heading into the final round with 14,581 players left in the game. We've got $2,500 in the bag right now. And we're heading into Q12. Good luck, players. One term refers to a spell checker replacing correct words it doesn't recognize. Backboard effect, dumb phone effect, Cupertino effect. I typed OK perfect earlier. And it said, OK, perjury, it was a text message. I was almost in big trouble there. Now, this effect has been the cause of much embarrassment, like when I'm getting Pringles today is autocorrected to, I'm getting pregnant today. It has happened. The older spell checkers would change cooperation to this word and drive us all nuts. Apple's home city. Cupertino effect for the win. We've got 11,733 winners tonight, baby. <laughs> Congratulations to 11,733 winners. You survived that absolutely crazy, wild, savage question. Maybe the most savage in HQ history, perhaps. Perhaps. You are taking them 21 cents. We've got Anne Wise, uh, who's uh, obviously a very wise woman. We've got Bruce Griffin. Uh, we've got Thorn over there as well. Ezra 1637, uh, sweet couple. Collie over there. Uh, yummy bacon. I like bacon as well. You can buy some bacon with that cash. Why not? That was super impressive. I'm still sweating from that super savage that we had earlier. That was not an easy game. Well done, everyone. That was impressive. You made me a believer. You really did. You came, you played, you totally slayed. I'm Sharon Carpenter. Here's where to find me on the socials. Let me know how you did tonight. Don't be shy. Stop by and say hi. And we're back tomorrow to spice up your Saturday night, of course. More fun games and cash, cold hard cash, plus your last chance to level up before Sunday's season finale. It's gonna be massive. See you soon, bye.